I want to congratulate the organizers for recognizing the achievement and for seeing it necessary that it is, imp it is important to honor the achievements that men would have made. Thank you very much. But I have a dilemma. My dilemma is I'm asked to talk on the topic positive or being a positive role model. I'm given 20 minutes or 15 by now. And I'm asked to motivate men. And so when I sat with the topic, my dilemma was, how do I do that? First, what is the definition of a role model? When I dissect this topic, what, how do we define a role model? Is it sociologically? From a religious standpoint? Do we define a role model from the standpoint of the needs of society? Maybe I should ask another question. Who is a role model? Do you see my dilemma? The other thing I realize is that there are so many issues in this topic. One very important thing about deliberating and speaking on any topic is context. Context is everything. And as I pull apart, deconstruct, I realize that there is so much ignorance on the ground that we still have not defined or answered the question, who is a role model? I discovered that whenever we make reference to role models, there is such a drought, a pervasive drought of role models that we have to revert to the deceased to identify role models, male role models. So we talk about people like Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the late great Nelson Mandela. We conjure up these deceased. And so I'm asking myself, don't we have living role models? Why is it we have to go there? So do you see the dilemma that I have? Here's another question. Is there a place in society today for role models? Or is it just a matter of convenience? Now, so my first point was the definition. How do we define a role model. Who is he? Where do I look for him? Is he a politician? Is he a preacher? Because definitions will inform our beliefs and our beliefs will inform how we act. So it's important for us to define the role model. Now, second, I believe, and if I really want to speak to the topic, I believe that every man Every male should act in the capacity of a mentor and a mentee. I'm going to say that again. Every man should act in the capacity of a mentor and a mentee. As a mentor, it behooves us men not to leave the world the same way we came. As a matter of fact, we should leave it better than we met it. That means every male should take it upon himself to impart to some other male the virtues, the skills that he has learned and ensure that another male has those same virtues. But here is another dilemma. Everyone who, every male who wants to mentor should also be a mentee. Why is that important? It is. Because before one must aspire to be in the position of mentor, you must first have experienced the virtues of being a servant. Because when we follow, we learn things about other men 
that we sometimes forget when we are in the position to instruct them. So before you can instruct, you must also be instructed. In other words, before you can be in a position of leadership, you should have been a great follower. You should have learned the virtues of following. And I said dual capacity because at the same time, or maybe I should put it another way, any man who desires to be in a position of leadership must first submit himself to leadership, to being led. Because when you are submissive, it teaches you to appreciate your brother's sufferings. It teaches you, it trains you to be a little bit more soft as you are mentoring him. You understand. For we cannot, as men, take another man where you have never been. You must walk with him through the ups and downs. Mentorship is not a one-off program once a week. You have got to be willing to get down in the dirt. Roll your sleeve up. In other words, you cannot mentor from afar off. 